show where I discuss the news and you guys can listen and let me know your thoughts following today's episode. Which, speaking of, on today's episode, we're going to cover the mess that occurred yesterday and uh, late on Sunday. Uh, since everyone's kind of had a chance to give their analysis and their input, uh, I figured I'd come in and share just some of the news that's been coming out, uh, maybe give you guys something to feel a little bit better on. We'll also take a look at previous historical events that have cause these types of downturns in uh, the global crypt the global crypto space and the economy but in general uh, I, I think that good news is, uh, is is shortly on the horizon here after potentially a bit of a, a maybe a bear downturn so uh, and then we'll also take a look at some good news coming out of ethereum that has potentially led to its bounce back or at least a moderate bounce back from its big fall off yesterday so uh, so let's just jump into the markets because they, uh, they, they, they're back today. They're certainly up. You know, you expect that after a big downturn yesterday. I think everything was in double digit losses, except for maybe Bitcoin, which given that it's the most expensive, it's natural that it may not fall uh, as high a percentage, but it did fall down from the sort of 47, 48 hundreds all the way down to uh, to to you know almost four thousand, so it was it was a pretty ugly day. Uh, granted, it had already started to sort of been tilting downward, but once the news came out from the, I'm not going to call it a Chinese ICO ban, and we'll get into that in a little bit. But uh, for now, for for practicality's sake, we'll call it a ban. Uh, with the China China ICO ban, it really sent everything into a spiral. So. But the big lo losers were, of course, NEO and Ethereum, given that those are the two big ICO platforms. They were ultimately the ones to suffer the most. Now, NEO, of course, took the biggest hit, given that it is the Chinese Ethereum, quote unquote, and is heavily based out of China and has actually ICOs coming up that are based in China with Red Flash. The Actually, Neo has actually bounced back quite well today, and Omize Go, uh, both of which t seem to be, you know, fairly unfazed. I don't want to say necessarily that Neo wasn't completely damaged. Omize Go uh, certainly held up better than Neo did yesterday, only falling uh, probably about 20 points, whereas Neo fell about 40 points. So it was a pretty rough day overall. But they're back up, you know, almost 20% today uh, to, you know, 22 and some change per token and Umize Go still holding above $9. So uh, looking strong on both fronts there. And again, Ethereum is back up. But overall, I mean, it was it was a big fall yesterday. I think we lost about, yeah, we lost uh, somewhere in the range of 30, 30 billion in the total market cap. Uh, you know, you're never going to feel too good about seeing days like that occur. But, you know, we do have to have these pullbacks. I believe a couple of days ago I had mentioned that we were getting that big run up feeling that we had that I was getting or excuse me, I was getting a feeling of the big run up we had uh, in the June time frame, which you can see here. And we were going up into the 110, 115 range, billion dollar range all the way up down or excuse me, all the way up from 30 billion. So it kind of gave me that feeling. And, you know, when we have those big run-ups, we start looking more parabolic on the charts. That's usually when the time for a big pullback is, is likely to occur. It usually just takes a matter of some, some more dramatic news, much like what we got here over the weekend on Monday. So, all in all, it is to be expected. Now, where we go from here, that, of course, is the big question. So, you know, just looking at, you know, moving forward here. So, we've got... You know, China banning ICOs, but it's not really a ban. It's more of a suspension of activities. You know, they don't want people illegally raising funds through ICOs with, you know, illegal activities. Now, that is obviously very likely uh, as uh, anytime you have a new piece of technology like this, you're going to have illegal activities because naturally the risk is greater in illegal activities and the, the greater the risk, the greater the reward. So, of course, you're always going to jump in and hit any new platform or any new piece of technology that's going to help you make money faster. So with the with the China ICO ban, or we're going to call it a temporary ban, you know, it's really meant to limit a lot of the more scammy coins that are coming out because the, the China government actually came out because, you know, it's, it's the People's Bank of China that came out against these ICOs, these illegal fundraising. And, and it's, you know, it's no wonder given that ICOs, at least here in the uh, the states, have raised I think three or four times what traditional fundraising methods have done 
you know, th there's obviously a lot of concern on governmental fronts to maybe limit the ability that these ICOs have in terms of allowing them to raise funds. And again, it's but it's more about the, the illegal activities, not necessarily the ones who are doing it right or doing it legally. So that's why it came out that this is going to be temporary until they can figure out how to maybe license this information or excuse me, license these ICOs, make sure that people are legit so that we're not getting a bunch of, again, scammy tokens and scammy coins coming out and hitting the marketplace, potentially duping people and promising the world and, and delivering a, a pile of crap. So, uh, so in the short term then, you know, we have to consider what the damages are going to be here moving forward. So uh, just in general, you know, we're going to have less ICO participation from China. I mean, that's blatantly obvious. I mean, we're already getting less of that from uh, the States, but in China now we're taking a big market away uh, that previously had been participating in ICOs. So something that, well, again, for me, I'm not an ICO participant. I usually wait till the aftermarket. I like to more invest in a proven product or at least a product that uh, has something more behind it than say a nice juicy white paper and uh, some, some you know, nice graphs and a nice white uh, and, and a nice website. I generally like to see what kind of platform exists, check out the GitHub, check out what kind of activity is going on and see if there is even a usable platform or a reasonable use case for the token. At that point, then I'll, of course, will will go ahead and make my decision on what I want to do from that point in time. But um, but, you know, with that loss of the Chinese government with the Chinese audience and the Chinese in these ICOs and potentially in other, you know, token and cryptocurrency avenues you know we are getting some some support from russia you know they're they're obviously catching on and, and becoming more and more receptive to this technology so you know i'm not going to say that we'll necessarily replace the chinese ico market but you know we, we are getting a little more activity to help maybe offset what we just lost so uh, the other thing with the uh, the short term damages here is that the previously issued tokens are now having to give out refunds, give back refunds, excuse me. So now we're looking at a potential for a lot of co tokens and coins to just completely disappear, whether they were, were, were valuable or you know, true or not, we're still going to lose out on a lot of them. A lot of people are concerned that NEO is going to go away. I don't think that it will. Uh, the Chinese government actually has come out and said that they do want to work with, you know, universities and, and other entities, other corporations and, and other, you know, individuals with on this blockchain technology and, and where we go from here. But, you know, really the big bulk of this is to just cut down on any potential fraud. And while, in my opinion, that's just an excuse for a government to flex its might, at the same time, you know, there are a lot of people who don't have the time to necessarily read white papers and understand uh, the, the technology that uh, is being developed and whether or not it's actually true or not. Uh, especially those who, you know, even where I get lost is that if you wanted to go in and really identify the code structure of a new protocol or a new token, you know, a lot of people don't necessarily have that means at all. So uh, this is, again, just a good thing for the probably the average investor or soon to be average investor. Current average investors are like you and I who, you know, we do take the time to read these white papers. We have some technical grasp on what's going on. But moving forward, if we do want to bring in more individuals into this space, grow this market cap to a trillion dollars and two and three and beyond, you know, we do need to have at least d devolve or, or dissolve some of the worries that the next sort of ring of investors are going to have, which is, are they being scammed? Is this a Ponzi scheme? So on and so forth. So also in the short term, we're going to be dealing with a lot of weak speculation and that could send us into a, a bear market here for the next, you know, three to four months or maybe even until the end of the year. Uh, now, in terms of where I think we're going to go, you know, I think, yeah, I think we may fall back down to, you know, the where we were at the tops of, you know, the last peak that we had, which is around 110 to 115 in the total cryptocurrency market cap uh, as a potential, right? It's a lot of ifs, if then type of, you know, situations here in cryptocurrency and in any market really, but especially in cryptocurrency with it being so volatile. Uh, if we can get, find a nice support layer or a nice support level, where we're going to have people 
tossing their money in when they see these prices fall a lot, you know, we may be fine. We may be able to stave off a bear market and continue moving forward. But until we get some type of confidence back, you know, the market is shaky now and it's going to be shaky here at, again, at least for the next couple of months while we wait and see what goes on with how China is going to handle these ICOs, where things go with that. And if they're going to get any licensing out soon, I, I doubt that they will. The government tends to move relatively or, you know, tends to move slow there's no relative about it they move slowly and for us to get any type of cryptocurrency license out of them is is definitely going to take a few months but you know from there we'll just have to wait and see but i would just you know take your time with this market don't necessarily r jump rush to jump in and buy buy super low prices continue doing your cost dollar cost you know dollar cost averaging putting in simple steady amounts of your own money each week or each you know whatever time period you wish in order to help you know avoid any type of major losses or anything like that because we could be we could have a dead cat bounce here it could be 2 days from now when you and I are going to be talking about how you know we're down another you know 20 billion in the total market cap or more uh, because there was an artificial bit, bit of confidence that came back and then another big sell off and you're going to get continued sell offs as we grow and that's why I say we may enter a bear market because a lot of people missed out on a chance to sell a lot of the tokens they had recently picked up so as they start to get back those gains or at least break even they will sell them off and that's where we're going to then run into these bear markets because the moment it gets to that point you're going to want to sell and you know so on and so forth on down the down the way so uh and then you know with also in the in, in maybe in this is more of a, a long term and we'll just jump over to long term you know are anonymous cryptocurrencies next is, is that the next tokens or the next technology that the Chinese government will go after is these anonymous coins like Monero and Verge uh, and Zcash. And obviously there are others, Cloakcoin being one of them. But, you know, if they're going to start banning other ICOs, what is, what's the next bit that they're going to do things in the name of protecting individuals from, you know, because anonymous coins are going to get that bad rap of being used for drugs and terrorism and all of that. But, you know, we all know that, you know, fiat cash is equally as used for all of this as well. So, you know, when, when these central banks are going to start seeing the impact that, that cryptocurrency is going to have, they're going to, you know, move to protect themselves as long as they can, right? You know, if, if you know anything about this space, it, it's inevitable that cryptocurrencies are going to catch on and be full-fledged. It's just a matter of how they get there and, and in what manner. But overall, you know, the, the, the beast is out of the cage, so to speak. This isn't going to go away anytime soon. So now governments are going to be scrambling to try and tame this and really control it as best they can until you know eventually it just becomes out of their hand and they're going to have to just bend to the will of the people it's much like how the internet was when it was created you know he had a lot of people and a lot of companies creating intranets but you know you don't necessarily want to go on to chase.com and have to you know be limited to you know or have your access limited to their you know, their intranet simply by being a customer, you know, rather than being an employee. So there's a lot that goes into, you know, sort of how this fight is going to be handled moving forward. But the more people that start to get involved in cryptocurrencies, the, the more and more inevitable uh, and the quicker things become in terms of giving us uh, control and power over our own money once again. Uh, additional long-term things to keep in mind uh, is that we're going to unfortunately have less Chinese ICO innovation or just less I in innovation in cryptocurrencies in general. The With the government clamping down, no one wants to go to jail, no one wants to be in trouble for this type of stuff, so it's going to naturally limit things unless these individuals move out of China into, say, Singapore and Thailand where regulations are, are quite free or or you know, even in the States, uh, it's, it's a, you could call it a little more free, even though we don't necessarily allow the participation of ICOs anymore. Either way, this is going to hurt a little bit on the technical front. But then again, with the Chinese government coming out and saying that they would like to work with individuals on this tech, on this technology, 
you know, maybe it, it ends up being okay, but it's, you know, until we get to the point where those, those licenses come out that are going to allow individuals and new cryptocurrencies and companies to, to give out new tokens or to, to have ICOs and raise, raise funds this way, uh, it's going to be a pretty slow process here. And, and unfortunately, NEO is probably going to be the big, biggest sufferer and, and maybe a couple of others. But um, I, either way, all I've seen is still confidence in NEO. They have put out you know, press releases saying that they're not phased by it at all. They're going to stay the course and keep doing their thing. And most valuations have come back saying there's still going to be a very valuable token in the not too distant future. So it's a long-term hold if, uh, if that's what you're looking at. And as always, this isn't financial advice, but uh, for me, I also have a stake in it too. While it, it hurts seeing your, uh, your losses come through in such a manner, if you believe in the technology, you believe in where Neo's going, their leadership, usually you shouldn't have it be too phased by uh, any type of uh, downturn. And then lastly, long term, if and when these the ICOs are legal, which is more a matter of when and not if, uh, what is this licensing going to cost? And, and is this going to then limit or, or create a barrier of entry that a lot of people aren't going to necessarily be able to get over? So, uh, so all in all, you know, it's tough to see these things are going to happen though and in general you just have to be prepared for these sort of shaky events or these events that get these weak hands running for the hills you have to expect them and they're going to keep happening until we get to a point where the market is relatively stable and not nearly as volatile and we're going to be volatile at least probably until half a trillion or a trillion dollars if not probably a lot more. So just something to keep in mind, you know, keep your emotions in check, be prepared for big time losses. But if you're holding long term and you're not doing anything stupid, you're more than likely going to still come out on top here in the next five to 10 years. So my advice, uh, put the Blockfolio app away, maybe even delete it, go outside, forget about your cryptocurrencies, maybe come back in a couple months when the, when the, when the market's finally recovered and, and doing good and you will likely be fine and happy with what you see. So, um, and this kind of moves into a quote from Fred Wilson that's been floating around. And I actually uh, watched Banking on Bitcoin last night. It's a documentary, the new documentary on Netflix. It's getting rave reviews. It's really good. It, it, it covers a lot of what some of you may already know, but gives you some interesting video that maybe you've not seen before. Uh, really provides interesting information and history just around Bitcoin and where it's come from. And uh, and kind of touches on some of the philo philosophical points too, such as, you know, Charlie Schramm and how he's going to jail. But, and, and a lot of these guys, these early entrepreneurs, they're the guys who are the first through the door of the firing line, who are they going to be the ones taking shots, taking, you know, getting shot as they walk through the door. But ultimately in any major revolution or any major, major technological breakthrough, there's going to be some who, who unfortunately take a bullet for us all. Uh, hopefully they will be rewarded for it in the end. I'm sure they will. But uh, it's very exciting to kind of have that everything put into perspective. If again, you believe in the technology, believe in the space, much like you and I do. And uh, a great quote from Fred Wilson. He's a VC guy, hates traditional VCs, uh, really has been a big believer in cryptocurrency for a long time. His quote is, and it's again, very appropriate for where we're at now. The lesson from the internet is anything that China bans, invest in it. Now this is more of a tongue in cheek type of quote, but the idea is still firm. You know, China doesn't have access to Facebook and Google. And uh, could you imagine if you had invested in those at the, at the very bare minimum of when you could get access to them, you would probably uh, agree with that particular sentiment. Now, again, that's not everything. It's very, again, a very tongue in cheek comment and, and is something that is not, does not pertain to everything that China, China bans, but is something that, you know, along investment lines, something 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 to think about and uh and it was really as i was watching it and and that particular line came through uh i just thought it was really funny because uh, it literally it was just after the market had crashed he, that quote came out and uh i i, I figured well i got to bring that in and uh, highlight that you know when the gordo show comes out and when we have a chance to finally talk about what's taken place 
and how and maybe you know you call it ironic maybe you call it poetic or coincidental certainly but uh, i thought it was really funny and thought i should share by the way definitely check out banking on bitcoin on netflix if you have it well worth the watch about an hour and a half long and uh, again may it may cover a lot of what you already know but you'll get a, a glimpse into some things you probably haven't seen before and it really visualizes bitcoin really well and it's something that you can always of course share with your friends uh you know and show them how much of a psycho you are about this uh, this technology so um, all right. And then it kind of along the same lines too, you know, I really wanted to touch on, uh, you know, what happens with these historical events when they take place, because, um, you know, obviously a long time ago, and this is something that banking on Bitcoin touches on is, is sort of a timeline of events that covers on these. If you remember this chart, this is back in 20, uh, December, 2013 and Bitcoin had reached an all time high. It was right around, you know, $1,200, uh, us. And, uh, and then we had the Chinese government banning financial institutions from using Bitcoin that sent everything into a tailspin, you know, fall, a, a virtual free fall, more of a, a closer to a crash. I mean, it lost, you know, 25 of the, you know, 25, 30, 40% of the total market cap was gone and, uh, and was something that, you know, really had a lot of people shaken and you saw it kind of continue to fall down up until, you know, you had some confidence and and things like that. And then we had, you know, we had the DDoS attacks come out on the exchanges. We had Mt. Gox, the, uh, the, the closing of their issues and all, you know, just kind of continued to be, uh, just send us, send us into a bear market for quite a long time. Now that is, you know, potentially what we're looking at here when we think about major events like China banning ICOs. Is that going to send us into another tailspin where we're in a bear market for a couple of years? Now, I don't think that we'll be in a bear market for that long. I think there's now probably too much excitement in the space for there to be a, you know, two, three year bear market. But it's certainly possible here in the short term until we get any type of, again, good, strong confidence back in the space. You know, it's possible that we are going to be entering, you know, a three, three to four month bear market, maybe even a little bit longer if you think about things really. But, uh, but you know, eventually it's going to come back again. If you know this space, if you if you've done any type of research into this technology, what it means and where it's going to and where we're going to go with it and what it's going to do to the world, you know that eventually we're going to be fine. Just hunker down. Hoddle on and, you know, you'll be fine in, uh, in the long run. Now, to move on some, to some exciting news, since we've had nothing but really bad news here for the last 48 hours, uh, the Raiden test net is up. Now, for those of you who don't know, Raiden is the new framework for Ethereum and really promises to do some heavy lifting that, while may not be necessarily needed at this point in time, could be the trigger once live that unloads us out of this bear market that I think we probably will be in here, at least short term wise, and put us back into another bull market. Because if you weren't familiar with the Raiden network or the, the Raiden framework, what it promises to do to Ethereum is make it scalable. And we're talking a million transactions per second. And, and maybe more, you know, it could be liter it, it, it literally will be scaling. So the more people using it, the faster it can become. So we're talking millions of transactions per second, if need be. The confirmations for these, uh, for any type of transfer will be confirmed within seconds, as opposed to many, many minutes at this point in time. Uh, you know, you could have a, a, a a transaction confirm a half hour or longer sometimes with uh, Ethereum. Not to say that Bitcoin has... Uh, been worse, but you know it seems like SegWit is finally catching up, and the mempool has died down. So SegWit, I think, is finally you know kind of stabilized. I, I, I sent a couple of transactions here earlier today. Most of them were down in, a, in you know the reasonable uh, percentages. You know the sub one percent, which is where you want to see it, not something like uh, you know 30, 40 bucks, uh, but more like maybe a buck or two, uh, which is not ideal given that Litecoin is still pennies on the dollar uh, and uh, ethereums are also very very low but um but it, it, anyway the confirmation for 
you know, Ethereum is going to come down. Uh, their ledgers are now going to be uh, more confidential. It's going to be like single or, you know, when single transactions are, are being sent, they're not necessarily going to show up on the global shared ledger. It'll be interoperable. So it'll work with any token that follows Ethereum, Ethereum's standardized token API. Those fees are going to come down. Uh, that'll be transaction fees lowered. Uh, it'll be seven orders of magnitude lower then on the blockchain and micropayments will then be enabled because those fees will be lower confirmations will be faster and just everything in general is going to speed up and uh and this is exciting this is like i said this could be the once we go live with ride in it could be something that pulls us out of this uh, uncertain time that we're entering right now where we don't necessarily know where we go or or, or what the next step is going to be. We've still got Bitcoin really being a very slow uh, you know, network overall, even though Segwit and the Lightning Network is, is supposed to help speed that up. But you could think of Raiden as the Lightning Network for Ethereum. Rai, I think, is Lightning in uh, Japanese or Chinese. So, uh, so this is again something that could bring us out of this, and and then make a lot of these these DApps, these decentralized apps that are on the Ethereum network, uh, a lot more viable. Because right now it's 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 tough with the fees the way they are. Those fees get transferred over to the users. If you're you know using a ga a, a game or, or playing a game or doing a, a, using any type of DAP on Ethereum, there are of course fees associated with that. Uh, and so hopefully this can reduce some of that and make things a little bit easier and just get people excited about uh, Ethereum. I am a of course a big fan. I'm a long term hodler of Ethereum and uh, was one of my first uh, tokens that I had ever picked up when I got into this space. So uh, so I thought that that was exciting. I thought it was a, maybe a nice way to uh, end today's show because uh, just, man, a lot of worry, a lot of red. Everyone's freaking out. Uh, I'm not freaking out. It's, it's, it's inevitable that we have these things. Um, when I say these things, these pullbacks, these major pullbacks, they are going to happen without question. And you can't necessarily think that the number in your Blockfolio app is going to just continue to rise day over day, year over year. It's, it's not the manipulated stock market that we currently operate here in the United States. It's an actual market that has real people in it. And it has some whales and there's manipulation, but it's not like something that can just continue to go up and up and up and up forever it has to come down and the, the longer it takes for it to come down the harder that fall is going to be so you always need to be mindful of that when you're dealing with a market uh, of any kind but especially especially one like cryptocurrencies that uh, is going to be susceptible to people taking their payouts when they get uh, satisfied to a certain degree or when we get major news such as china banning the icos for now temporary ban or any other news that may come bringing it crashing down. So that's it for today's episode, folks. I'm glad you tuned in. Uh, I am Crypto Gordo, and uh, I appreciate you guys always stopping by. If you like today's show, be sure to like it. If you want to see more content like this in the future, be sure to subscribe. Subscribe. Follow me on Steemit. Follow me on Twitter. And be sure to disregard fiat and acquire Bitcoin. We'll see you guys tomorrow.